What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. So by popular demand, uh, we're going to do another uh, Ask Me Anything video, I guess we'll call it. Uh, and by popular demand, I mean one person asked for it. <laughs> but uh, the kind of engagement I was getting with this was really cool. And uh, I did leave a lot of questions on the table that I'd still like to get to. We're not, we can't do everything, but I figured it would be good to do at least one more to get some of these questions off the table and uh, do another video like this. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the first one uh, and I hope you enjoy this one as well. So let's get right started. Um, already got a hard last name to pronounce. So I'm on the front end, disclaimer, I am very sorry for butchering your last names out there, people. <laughs> Brenda Giwa, Giwa, I'm not sure. It's spelled G-I-O-I-A. Sorry, Brenda. Um, you asked me basically in a nutshell uh, what and why, why and when did I leave Maine? Um, and, you know, I'm curious how the South stole you and converted you into a Southerner. Well, they stole me, but can, becoming a Southerner is questionable. Um, and, um, basically do you ever miss Maine? So in a nutshell, when did I move? Why? And do I miss it? So I moved to Nashville from Wyndham, Maine in October of 2005. I went to pursue music. That's why, um, as y'all know, I've been a musician for a number of years and leading up to 2005, I needed a change anyway. Um, I just lost a, a, a job at a radio station I was working at, and I was kind of at a crossroads, something that I was already thinking about doing with my buddy, Paul, and we finally decided to do it. Um, and packed a U-Haul, hooked it up to my Durango, and off we went. Uh, I did a video early on in this channel, and as usual, I do not prepare properly, so I can't give you the number of the video because all of these num videos are numbered but if you go back through the titles you'll see about how you know about my move to nashville that will give you even more detail on the process and the crazy story behind the move but when was uh, in 2005 why was to uh pursue music um, as far as the south uh converting me look I've also done a video about accents and saying y'all and, and all the different things I've learned how to say down here, like lollygagging. And some people don't adapt naturally. They never lose their original accent. They never start using the different dialects. I'm not that. F months, I mean, just a few months into moving to Nashville, I already found myself wanting to say y'all just wanted it just so there was a period there where I was like either gonna say y'all or you guys what's up y'all how you guys doing what's up y'all how you guys doing and I would trip up <laughs> and like mumble because my brain now had this new way of saying it and it didn't couldn't decide which one to use so then I just just gave I, I let go I succumbed to the urge and I just started saying y'all so I've been saying y'all for years uh, main accents, um, usually you drop R's on main words like car, up main is ka. That went away pretty quickly. I started saying car. Now I do not have a Southern accent, but I pronounce my R's more. People can still sometimes, you know, sniff me out. Like, you're not from here. Are you from the North? So I still get that once in a while too. Um, but, uh, Yeah. As far as being in the South, I love it. I love the heat. Uh, this ties us into what I miss about Maine. And I, I touched upon this a little bit with yesterday's video. I miss the ocean. Do not miss the cold. <laughs> but that's the one thing I miss in Maine is the ocean. All right, next. Um, name, you're from Maine. Another Maine question. Name a regional food. Something perhaps that we have never heard of. Uh, well, have you heard of lobster? <laughs> of course you have. But that's really, Maine is, I mean, that's lobster capital. But for something that you might not have heard of, 
you know, obviously everyone's heard of a hot dog, but Maine has Red Franks. And I think you can find things that are called Red Franks in any Maine great grocery store, but they're not the same. Uh, the Red Franks in Maine are smaller in diameter, diameter. they're red, a, hard, a brighter red, and a thicker casing to it. When cooked properly, it has a little snap to it, and then it's the flavor is unmistakable. Sorry, if you hate hot dogs and this is grossing you out, my apologies. Trigger alert, but I love hot dogs. I love a good beef hot dog, but the Red Franks are um, amazing. But the other one that really is specific to Maine is Moxie. If you're not familiar, Moxie is a soda, or if you're in the Midwest, a pop. Or as my grandfather would say, tonic. Um, Moxie is uh, this more robust cola. It's got a cola vibe to it, a root beer vibe to it. But it's, it's a much stronger taste, more bitter. And it can leave a little aftertaste. It sticks with you. The best way for me to create a parallel to that is if for all the beer drinkers out there. And I certainly was one. Beer was my number one through my, my years of drinking. Um, you have a Miller Lite, and then you have Sam Adams or uh, you know a higher-end microbrew that is a hoppier beer, an IPA, something that's really robust and has a lot of flavor to it, extra little kick, you know, um, and is just a, a more um, robust flavor and mouthfeel to it. That's what Moxie is compared to Coke. You got Coke, and then you got Moxie. And it's amazing. I hated it growing up. My grandmother drinks it. I think she still has one. Well, used to before we moved away. But, but when I was a kid, she had it all the time. And I've tried it, and it was like, gross. But as you age and your palate changes, man, I fell in love with it. So that was that was the uh one of my treats every time i went home was to drink some moxie so add that to the list of what i miss about maine i miss i miss uh moxie all right next um i know you're a musician but do you do any art or any other hobbies creative people tend to do many types also have you ever owned a house or desire to as a two for one right there oddly i'm not very artistic um even with music i've never been a songwriter I've done some creating over time, writing like, you know, bass, uh, bass riffs. Again, if you go, I'd mentioned this a couple videos ago. I have this other channel called DM Music where I was trying to do more bass uh, instructional videos. And for the most part, I wrote all of those grooves and the drum parts and created the drums on uh, GarageBand. So that's kind of creative, but naturally... I'm a more analytical person, you know, uh, math was always my strong point. Surprise, surprise, you know, I've fallen into being a business owner pretty naturally and, and, and have done well with that. Um, I can't draw for the life of me. Just oddly, I'm not a creative person. Even my, my approach to playing music, playing bass, I'm very mathematical with it. You know, uh, where to place the notes and how to fit the pocket and, and learning songs. So that's it. I've never been a songwriter. I'm not a singer. Never really wanted to be. But being a bass player you, and you want to work, you got to learn songs. You have to learn songs. I've probably learned 700 songs in the last 20 years. And not that's not a joke either. Um, so there's, there's a science behind that and how to best learn a song and the dedication and the commitment and the the hard work that goes into that, that was more my bag. I was into that, but um, oddly, I'm just not a creative person. I'm really not. And then, uh, have you ever owned a house or desire to? I've never owned a house, and yes, I want to own a house someday, right here in Hernando. I would love to get a uh, a little house. I think there's a question coming up here about what kind of house I want, so we'll wait till uh, we get to that. But yes, I would love to have a house. Um, I so um my bad that last one was Gloria do do you why doy sorry 
Gloria. Susan, you know what? First names, Susan. I also have suffered with panic disorder since my diagnosis in 1992. I have been managing it for many years with medication, which has been life-changing. I'm always looking for additional ways to live with my condition. What has helped you deal with this mental health issue? Uh, well, um, I quit drinking. That was the big start for me. If, if you're finding that, whether it's smoking weed or drinking alcohol or any other hard drugs, if, if you're doing any of that stuff and it's triggering uh, depression or anxiety in, in you, there's a good chance you want to get rid of all that. And then therapy. I, I can't stress enough how good therapy can be. One-on-one, -on -one, some people prefer group therapy. I'm a one-on-one -on -one guy. I just like sitting across from my, uh, my therapist. I just had a meeting with him today. We try to go every week, and I've been seeing the same guy for 10 years. So that's really, really, really help, been helpful for me. And then, you know, there's always medication. Uh, I'm not going to give advice on what you should take, but um, you can... Um, go see a doctor to give them your symptoms. I would say see a therapist first, get to know that person. They'll really learn what you're dealing with, um, what kind of anxiety, what kind of depression. Um, they can have a pretty good way to tell if you're bipolar or manic depressive, you know, for, they can kind of gauge where they're going and then they can point you in the right direction on maybe what would be a good fit for you. Um, but my number, my number one thing to anyone that's suffering with any kind of mental health issues is, you know, get help, ask for help and talk to someone and, and hopefully find a good therapist that can kind of help you on a weekly basis if possible. What is something you are looking forward to? That's Samantha Renee, man, not man, Samantha, um, I can't wait for Skyla to graduate school. <laughs> She's in the middle of eighth grade right now. And I don't want to rush things because when I see pictures of Skyla when she was eight, it's sad because I miss those days. But I'm also glad that we're growing up because things get easier in some ways and it's stressful in others. I'm definitely dealing with a teenager right now, so that's stressful. But I also don't need to teach my child how to tie a shoe. You know, so those <laughs> those things are happening. So I never want to rush things, uh, but man, school is stressful. I'm a full-time dad. I'm in charge of all of it. So keeping up with homework and making sure she's doing what she needs to do and, and making sure the grades are staying where they're at. And again, she's a teenager right now. She's getting herself in a little trouble here and there. You know, she's just being a teenager. So that's stressful. Um, but I see, like, when I see, when... I see her graduate out of Hernando High School, and that part's done. That will feel, I'll feel amazing for her, but it, to be honest with you, it'll feel like a, um, you know, uh, I will feel, I, I have accomplished something too. <laughs> God, there's so many stresses after that. I mean, at that point, Skylar's still only 18, super young, making mistakes, plenty of parenting left to do college who knows how that's going to work out but man to i'm just looking I'll, I'll um i will enjoy graduation i'm going to cry like a little baby but um it will give me a sense of some real accomplishment um let's go over here this is from stephanie wilson is doing a youtube channel what you thought it would be not necessarily good or bad, just is it the same experience you expected it to be from watching your mom for years, or was it completely different than you expected it to be? I will say um, what it did for me was just gave me more confidence in my life in another little area, getting on a camera or phone like this and putting this stuff out here and... and just being myself helped my confidence level. Um, and you all know the story, and I've, I've said this in a couple videos where a couple videos back, I talked about the, you know basically the origin of this channel. And part of it was a stepping stone where I started my podcast for my business. 
then got in front of a camera to make more videos for my business, which got me more comfortable and then led me to ultimately, hey, let's try this channel. And, uh, and I'm glad I did. I will say also um, the learning experience from video one to now was interesting. Trying to figure out what do I want to talk about, trying different things. Um, also, trying not to get hung up too much on analytics. Look, anyone out there that's a YouTuber, and all of you that are not YouTubers, let me say this. If you're talking to a YouTuber and they tell you that, eh, I don't care about views, I don't care about analytics, probably lying straight to your face <laughs> because we do. We'll look at all of it. And I uh, look at views. Now I'm monetized. Of course I look at earnings. We look at watch time hours. We look at how many comments we're getting. We look at how many thumbs up we're getting. And we will definitely look at how many thumb downs we're getting, which always makes me laugh. Like I always get a good four or five down thumbs when I'm talking about my grandmother. Do you hate me or my grandmother? Do you hate my grandmother? You better not. Um, <laughs> um, but the, 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 the key is you don't let it control you. Because if you put out a video that doesn't get a good engagement, it's really bad views, it's just not performing well, it's a bummer. It is. It's a bummer for the creator. You're like, dang, what I do wrong? I must have done something wrong to make it so this video wasn't enticing. People aren't clicking on it. Why? Oh, is it the title? Is it the thumbnail? So you start changing things and you can fall into that trap that I, I try to avoid, but it still gets to you, you know? Um, so that was, that was the biggest learning experience is, you know, you want to watch the analytics because you still want to, you want to find that perfect marriage of giving the audience what they like and still being genuine to yourself and being authentic. Um, and I feel like I'm getting better and better at that. Um, I hope you guys make it feel like I am for sure. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, we got one more here. Actually, no, we got, we got four questions. This is from Kelly Burns. She actually gave me like 10 questions, <laughs> but, um, I just cherry picked a few here that I'm going to go through here. So Kelly Burns favorite film back to the future give me back to the future 2 as a as a unit together and i i feel like back to the future 1 and 2 is really one movie i like back to the future 3 where they go out west way back when um and there's definitely easter eggs in it and there's ways it connects with the first two but the way the first and second movie of the the trilogy works together Really, it's just, for me, it's one big movie. But uh, uh, also a movie that I loved watching growing up was Ghostbusters, one of my favorites. So I just went out uh, last month or so, took Skylar to see Ghostbusters Afterlife. If you are a Ghostbusters fan, I highly suggest seeing Ghostbusters Afterlife. Afterlife. It's great acting, it's a great story, but tons of Easter eggs. And if you don't know what an Easter egg means, there's, there's just, Things that might be in the background or um, some things that someone might say that just makes you think of the first movie uh, and, and only like a real fan would catch uh, all kinds of different, all, you know, all kinds of different things. So I strongly suggest it. It's, it's a really good movie. Um, what are your phil philanthropic interests? You know, I I've, I've, haven't done much in that space. But I always think in my head, man, you know, I think a well-rounded approach is, you know, help kids. Uh, you know, so St. Jude or, you know, any kind of anything for kids. Uh, St. Jude would be a big one because of unfortunate cancer for kids. I would definitely uh, like to donate to that cause and animals. You know, the Humane Society, I guess, would be a good one. Um, you know, I'm not a purist with animal rights. I eat meat. I wish my car had leather seats. I like leather seats. So 
I'm not crazy like that. Uh, I understand hunting. You know, if, if people like eating venison, I get it. And it's a game, you know, people like going out hunting and fishing. I get it. That's cool. Um, but, you know, abuse is no good. And I think it usually comes down to dogs. Dogs is the, the sensitive spot. Dogs are so special to so many that, you know, seeing a, hearing, seeing a picture of a dog that's underweight and ribs are showing or they look like they've been abused, it's heartbreaking. So uh, I would probably want to donate to something like that as well. Who is your favorite beetle? You know, for context, uh, I've mentioned a handful of times that Metallica is my favorite band. Absolutely. But Beatles are the Beatles right there. It's like Metallica 1A, Beatles 1AA. Not even AB or not even B. It's like AA. It's a double A. <laughs> so close. And with both situations in those bands, I'm also like a... Uh, half-ass historian too i've watched all the documentaries and just have always followed the behind the scenes stuff and i know a lot about those bands like i'd be great at metallica and or beatles trivia nights if there was a restaurant in town that had a beatles trivia night i'd crush it you would want to be on my team trust me <laughs> i'd have a confidence going into that um so a huge beatles fan i, I just love the beatles and, and i love what all four bring uh, for meaning John, Paul, George, and Ringo. I love Ringo. I really do. Uh, being a bass player, obviously, I look at Paul McCartney. Um, Paul and John have, especially later, when they weren't writing together as much, but they were still helping each other out. But you, all, you have the John songs and you have the Paul songs. Early on, you can even tell a little bit, but... Uh, there's definitely a difference there. And then, of course, when you listen to their solos, solo careers, John's songs got too much John, and same with Paul. Like you can tell they balanced each other out a little bit. I tend to lean towards John songs. Uh, I just think there's a different mood in his music. But I love Ringo because I, I, I kind of sympathize with him in the sense that he's like an unsung hero. Ringo gets, you know, a lot of uh, flack on being a bad drummer. And that is so ignorant to call him a bad drummer. I get where people come from if they're not really a Beatles fan or even uh, they could be a great music fan and everything, but they listen to Ringo and they think he's too simple or his his fills when he gets on the toms and he and he rolls and he does some extra stuff might not be um, as technical um, as people think he should be. Lars Ulrich is also in this book for me. That's I could do a whole video on how much I love Lars Ulrich. Uh, any Metallica fan out there knows who that is. But but what people don't really understand is is Ringo was an amazing drummer, innovative in his feel and what he brought to the songs. He wrote his drum parts to the song. If all it needed was just a little kick drum beat to it, that's the song. You know, listen to uh, Come Together in the verses. Super simple. It's exactly what the song needed. And he's just got this unique feel. He's got the Ringo feel. And just a cool guy. No better now if, if anyone out there has seen the new Get Back uh, documentary, like the seven-hour epic documentary that was on Disney Channel. You really see how just chill Ringo was, and he was just everybody's friend. Paul, George, and, and, and John, definitely, you know, the writers, the main writers of the band, they'd get at each other. They all had stronger personalities, but Ringo was kind of right there in the middle and just... Just a cool guy. And when you see him now, he's in his 80s. I think he's 80. I think he's around there. Looks healthy. He's a fun interview to watch. Just seems like a really nice guy. He's all about peace and love. So uh, I just think Ringo's the coolest, honestly. Um, ah, and there we go. As I mentioned earlier, I was going to get a question about what kind of house I'd like. And we're going to, this is 
just happens to be the last one here. What would your dream home be like? You know, I'm pretty simple. I don't, I don't need, you know, 4,000 square feet. It's, it's not like that for me. But what I do want is a little above modest in the sense that, you know, I want three beds, two, maybe two and a half bath. The key is a garage that has a loft above it, a bonus room, because that's where my office studio would be. That I, Man, that'd be great to have that. <clears throat> a nice garage for obvious reasons, my car, but even maybe finish off the garage where I don't pull my car in, but that could be a studio. But either way, a nice garage, a loft above it, three bedrooms, two, maybe two and a half baths, a little bit of land, maybe half an acre, fenced in and ground pool. That's it, you know, like that, I would feel really successful and comfortable and, and feel like, man, I've, 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 got it, I've got it made. I'm blessed to have a house like that. That's, will that be my first house? Probably not, but that would be ultimate. I don't need cathedral ceilings and <laughs> Tons of land, you know, uh, just a mo like a three bed, two bath house with a garage. Pretty cool. I, I, I would, I would, could, uh, I could be good with that for the rest of my life. So, uh, so there it is, y'all. Um, see, y'all. I hope, um, sorry if you put a question out there and I didn't get to it. I did the best I could to try to get through as many as I, I could without taking too long between this video and the, the first one, we're looking at an hour. So, um, I hope my answers were good. Um, but I think what's cool about uh, videos like this is you kind of learning a little more nuggets of who I am for any of you that are interested. Obviously if you're following this channel, much like how I follow channels, I'm interested in the YouTuber. I want to learn more about the person I'm watching, you know? So, um, this is a way for me to put myself out there a little more and give you my views on some things. Or now you know Ringo is my favorite beetle. How about that? So uh, awesome. Again, um, check out my Facebook group. It's this, the same name as this channel, Derek Mishu, my, my name. Check me out on Patreon if you want to throw me a tip and donate and help support the channel. Um, and look, I hope you all have a great weekend. I'll be back before the weekend's over, and uh, we'll talk more about something. I don't know what yet, but that's the beautiful thing about this. I never know what I'm going to say. When I come into a new video, I usually just make up what I want to do 10 minutes before doing it and just throw it out there. So thanks, guys, and we'll talk to you again soon.